Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss financing of corporation. What is a corporation? We said corporation is a legal entity, its own legal entity. It's basically a person under the law that needs money, needs funding. For what purpose? They need money to operate. They need money to expand. They need money for a marketing campaign. They need money to buy inventory to sell. Companies need money all the time. How can they raise money? Well, they can raise money through two different sources. Either debt securities, simply put, means borrowing, borrowing money, and equity securities, which means issuing stocks or ownership in the company. And this is going to take us back to the, to the accountant equation. Assets, the assets of the company are coming from two sources. Liabilities, liabilities, which are debt securities, and equity, which represent equity securities. So simply put, you can finance your company by issuing debt or bonds, we're gonna say debt, or stocks issuing ownership. So those, those are the two main sources of financing of a corporation, which is equity and bond, stocks or bond, stocks or debt. In this session, we would look at the advantages and the disadvantages of each method. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with debt securities. Debt securities are instrument which the company borrows money, through which the company borrows money. What does that mean? It's borrowing money. You could also get a loan, which is a form of borrowing. Now, we're going to be discussing bonds. When we say debt securities, what we mean is bonds. But there are other forms of borrowing other than bonds. What is a bond? A bond when a company issued this piece of paper promising to pay the money back plus interest on that money. So if the company wants to borrow $100 million, they will issue bonds of $100 million and they'll have to pay some sort of an interest on that bond. So they will pay back the, the bond plus the interest. There are various types of bonds. Bonds comes in many different flavors. We're going to look at some of them. One is secured mortgage bond. When we say secured bonds, it means mortgage bond or secured mortgage bond. Those bonds are backed by specific asset like real estate or could be inventory, could be a, a warehouse, which is a real estate, a building, a piece of land, offering security to bondholders if the issuer default. So basically what we say is this. We give you the bond for now. You give us the money. And in case something happened, this bond is secure if we cannot pay you we would sell this real estate or whatever we have as collateral as mortgage and we'll give you back the money if we cannot pay back the debt which is good it means if you have a secured bond you will pay a lower interest rate some bonds are unsecured notice secured versus unsecured those unsecured bonds are also called debenture bonds same thing bonds not backed by any specific asset who can issue those type of bonds? Companies with excellent credit. Because when you borrow money and the borrower says, I trust you, it means you have a good credit. The issuers of these bonds, they have a good credit worthy. Now, other bonds, other companies can issue bonds, but what's going to happen, they have to pay a high interest rate. So you can issue a debenture bond, no problem at all, but you're going to have to pay a premium high interest rate. So the cost of borrowing is high because you are not securing the lenders. The lenders want to be secured. They can be either secured by your credit worthiness. Credit worthiness, it means your trust. They trust your company. They have good, you have good cash flow. You have good product. You're selling. You have good management. They trust you. They don't want you to pay premium. They're going to give you the money at a lower rate. Or if you don't, you have to pay a premium. Other bonds are convertible bonds, bonds that can be converted into predetermined number of stocks. So simply put, you have bonds and they will tell you, look, buy the bonds. And if we do very well, you can convert your bonds into stocks. For example, for each bond, you get 10 stocks or whatever the ratio is. It does not matter. 
Holders of bonds are essentially lenders, not essentially, they are lenders to the corporation and they are considered, simply put, creditors. Now again, that securities, bonds is the main one, but you can, any form of borrowing is a form of debt. Now, why do we borrow money? Borrow money is to amplify the return. What does that mean? When you issue the bond, you pay, let's assume 6%. What happened is this, you borrow this money and you will try to make 8%. That difference is extra return to you. Using other people's money to do what? To increase your return. Now, there are disadvantages of bonds. There are many disadvantages. We kind of mentioned a few of them indirectly, but let's mention them directly. One is interest. You have to pay interest on a regular basis. And this could be a significant financial burden. It doesn't matter whether the company is doing well or not well. Whether the revenue is going up, fluctuating up, or the revenue goes going down, or the profit going up or down, you still have to pay the interest. That's a pressure on your cash flow. Two, repayment pressure. You have to pay back this money by a certain date. So you have to plan ahead to have the cash flow available in place to pay off the debt. Also, credit risk. The, the more you borrow, the higher is your credit risk. High level of debt can negatively impact the company's credit rating. Credit rating is basically a score assigned to the company. It's assigned by those credit agencies. Now, the more you borrow, the worst is your score, your credit score. And the worst is your credit score, the more you have to pay an in interest because you become riskier, making it more expensive to borrow money in the future. Also, if you put collateral, there's a risk of losing your collateral. There's an asset risk. If the debt is secured, the company risks losing the collateral in case of default. Reduce flexibility. When you borrow money, we talked about debt covenant uh, in a separate recording. Uh, debt covenant is basically agreement between you and the lender. They limit you in doing certain things like paying dividend, expanding, whatever you have to do. You cannot do it unless the lenders agree to it or they have to agree in advance. So that covenant and repayment schedule can limit the company's operational flexibility and decision making. So you cannot use the money for whatever reason you want to because you're tied by the lenders. Obviously, there's a bankruptcy risk. Excessive debt can lead to financial distress and increase the risk of bankruptcy, especially an economic downturn where there's no sales. The economy is tanking. And as a result, you're not doing well. As a result, you have to pay the interest and you don't have the money to do it. Not as a result, you have to pay the interest because that interest obligation is, let me put it for you in simple words, fixed. Opportunity cost, fund used for repaying debt and interest might otherwise be used for investment in growth opportunities. You are given up opportunities. Those are few disadvantages of bonds. I'm sure you can think of more. How about equity securities? Remember, we can issue debt or we can issue equity. Equity is selling stocks, selling ownership in the company. So what you do is you sell that piece of paper, it's not usually a piece of paper, a stock, which is ownership, and the investors give you money in return. This form of financing, issuing shares of the corporation, equity securities, not just shares. When we say shares, it means stocks in the company, but could also means warrant. What is a warrant option issued by the corporation allowing the purchase of stocks? You could issue stock options as well. It means what? It gives the buyer the, the option to buy more stocks in the future. That's a form of equity securities. Now, bear in mind, shareholders, the people that buy equity securities, are the actual owners of the company. So of course, when we say owners, stockholders, shareholders, means the same thing. A corporation might issue a single class of stock. Each share has identical rights, like one class, common stock or they can issue class A, class B, class C. Maybe some classes can vote, others cannot. Some classes make you could issue preferred versus common. Some can get the dividend ahead of the common, the preferred get the dividend ahead of the common, so on and so forth. So it can issue one class or it can issue multiple classes of stocks or a series of stock, each with different rights and privileges. What are the advantages of issuing stocks? Well, the first thing is, there is no repayment of interest or principal. Stock issuance does not require the repayment or the interest payment. So when you sell stocks, the investors are not expecting you to pay them interest because they're not lenders. They're owners of the company. You don't have to pay back the money. You don't pay them back the money. They're the owners of the company. And this is going to reduce the financial strain, financial stress. Also, capital asset. It can raise significant capital, often more than loans. When people are 
part of owners, it might be easier to raise money. Also, it's a form of risk sharing. As you have more shares, people will share the risk across many, many, uh, many people. Now, again, there are disadvantages to the same advantages. We'll talk, we'll talk about them shortly. Talent attraction, useful for attracting and retaining employees through what's called stock options. Stock options means what? You work for us, we'll give you options in the company. You become an owner. So what you do is you work hard. Because you work hard, you want the company to do well, you want the stock price to go up. We're going to attract talent people, people with skills. They want to be successful. Therefore, they become part of the company itself when they have stock options. Basically, the employee and the company, they're working in the same direction. Also, public image can enhance the company's market presence when your stocks are publicly traded. There are disadvantages of stock issuance. One is ownership dilution. Remember I told you one of the advantages is risk sharing. The more stocks you have, the more shares you have, the more the risk is spread among many shareholders. But also the more risk you have, your ownership goes down. So if you have 10 shares of stocks and you have 10 owners, each owner owns one share. Now, if you bring 20 owners, then you have to split the shares 0.5 each. It means you have less ownership. Your percentage of ownership goes down the more you issue. Now, this is dividend pressure. Shareholders may expect, may expect, you don't have to pay dividend. Dividend is not required like, like interest. But some shareholders, they might expect this. If you're doing well, they might expect you to pay, which might put pressure on you. Stock prices can fluctuate widely. When you when you buy stocks, the stock price could go up, could go up, could go down. That's going to increase the risk. Regulatory burden. If your stocks are publicly traded, what's going to happen is you're going to have the SEC, state regulators, federal regulators always overlooking your company because you are publicly traded. Well, that's going to increase your regulatory compliance, which will give us a regulatory board burden. Public companies face extensive regulatory and reporting requirement, which means what? It's cost. To, to comply, you have to pay money, hire auditors, internal, external, specialists, to do what? To make sure you're in compliance. Take over, take over vulnerabilities. When you have stocks out there, and a lot of them, there's an increase of some group of investors buying those stocks and taking over your company. And there's a cost for issuing stocks. It can be costly and complex to issue stocks. Consideration for stocks. Now, when the company, another advantage of stocks is you can take a stock and exchange it for any, well, obviously you want to get money, but you could also exchange it for any asset. So if you want to buy a piece of land, if you want to buy a real estate, if you want to buy an office building, you might be able to give stocks to the seller. Now, when your stock is not publicly traded, it means there's no price for it. The board of directors decides the price of the stock if the stock is pub privately traded. So according to the Revised Model Business Corporation Act, stock can be issued in exchange for various benefits of the corporation. So this benefit can include, obviously, money. That's the main thing. But you could also get property. You can pay for future services. You can pay off liability. So, But who determined the price of the stock when it's not publicly traded? The board of directors. The people on the top would say, our stock is worth this much. You know, the stock is worth $5 per stock times, you know, if we're going to issue 100000 that's half a million dollar of value. And we're going to exchange this for, I don't know, a piece of land that we want to buy. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following is an advantage of equity financing over debt? So which one is better in form of equity when you issue stocks than debt? A. Guaranteed dividend payment to shareholders. For one thing, the dividend are not guaranteed. So the statement itself is wrong. Okay, so guaranteed dividend, there is no guaranteed dividend. Okay, a, a, an equity. Immediate increase in cash flow. No, they both give you cash. Whether you borrow money or you sell stocks, they both give you immediate cash flow. We're down to 50-50. No obligation to repay the principal. Is this an advantage of equity over debt? I would say yes. When you sell stocks, you don't have to pay back the stockholders like a loan. And that's an advantage. But let's look at D. Less regulatory compliance? No. If you have stocks, it's more regulatory compliance. If it's publicly traded stocks, even more 
more plus regulatory compliance. So you have to know the difference between whether you choose to finance with equity or debt, what are the advantages and disadvantages if you're studying for the CPA exam, your accounting courses, CMA exam, or other certification. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you understand this topic better. FarhatLectures.com is always here to help. Invest in yourself. Good luck, and of course, stay safe.